Hi, welcome to Design Spark. Today I'm joined by Noah Green. You may remember Noah Green from Functional Safety, Ask the Expert from Phoenix Contact. Hi, Noah. Welcome back to Design Spark. Hey, how are you doing? So, Noah, last time we were speaking, uh, you mentioned about Megatronics, and we asked you to come back and talk to us a little bit more about Megatronics, which is, you know, a really interesting um, career within engineering if you're a Megatronics engineer. But can you just tell me what w- what was it made you decide that you wanted to become an engineer? So in high school, I went to a technical high school instead of a traditional nine, uh, at least in the States, nine through 12. So uh, in addition to the academics, math, reading, uh, sciences, whatever, we had a career and technical area that we were uh, allowed to choose in our ninth grade year. So mine happened to be electronics. Um, really got into it because of my grandfather was a power engineer back in his time when he was uh, still working around. Um, We talked about it a lot, seemed very interesting to me, and he told me, hey, you should try uh, looking at electronics, did it, loved it, and then now here I am in my current role. Fantastic. So uh, keeping the the generation going then with the engineering approach from your grandfather, that's great. So Megatronics, essentially, what are we looking at in terms of engineering disciplines? What's covered by Megatronics? When I went through for my mechatronics training, uh, we covered electrical engineering, mechanical, and computer science. Uh, not super in depth to either run, but a nice. We're able to work with it for all three. Right. Okay. So that, that's that's really bringing in multi-skilled um, disciplines. So you, like you say, you've got kind of three different levels there of engineering. Where was it that you actually studied Megatronics? I went to a local community college, uh, Harrisburg Area Community College. That's where I did my associates in Megatronics. Right, okay. And then in the aspects of uh, Megatronics, what what do you consider were kind of the most difficult areas? And then conversely, um, what did you find to be the most straightforward? So my background being electronics, uh, the most straightforward to me was electrical electronics. Um, the hardest ones would have had to been uh, hydraulic, uh, hydra, I guess it's fluid dynamics, and then hydraulics for however machines work or giant cranes or whatever it is. Uh, that was probably the most weird thing to understand of, of uh, the mechatronics world. And in terms of what you're currently doing with, with Phoenix Contact, um, how does the megatronics that you've learned transfer into uh, the practical engineer environment, the knowledge that you gained? How, 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 how is that then being used in your current role? Being in an automation role, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of electronics that go around, obviously, trying to figure out a machine problem or even now helping uh, in a marketing role, helping out with a customer, um, trying to figure out an electronic schematic or fit our products in where they go and then coming up with a program side of things if i need to help help someone with a programming issue or even just program my own uh displays or demos that i'm putting forward most of that is uh most of that was learned either on the job as a mechatronics apprentice or in the classroom during my degree so definitely most of the stuff that i learned definitely translated over not so much the hydraulics anymore fortunate enough for me but the electrical and the programming side of things for sure. Okay. So that just brings me on to the, the next question. When we're talking about um, the way that the world is progressing in terms of the industrial world along the lines of IoT and the movement towards Industry 4.0, I would assume that a megatronics engineer will be a key player in the integration of industrial processes, you know, all the way through from maybe the sensor right up to the analytical layer. And like you were talking about, programming and going from the electrical to the mechanical would you just be able to expand a little bit on that yeah so um, in my previous role i was a mechatronics technician for one of our departments Uh, we had a machine down uh, on our floor like not down as in like not working but it was just it existed in a different part of the company so uh, we wanted to collect a bunch of indicators as to how this machine was running so um, me having a nice background in programming and electronics uh, we came up with a plan to implement a new a new controller into this machine so that we could collect a bunch of points on this machine of how well it was running, how much downtime it had, errors, what kind of errors. And then we were able to send that data off into our IT's 
IT department's hand so that they could store it in a database. And then from there, um, our department head, our uh, manufacturing engineers, our planning department were all able to create their own reports and figure out how well the machine is running, um, adjust times in our, they call them routers, mm -hmm. adjust times in there so we can bring things more into a realistic scope. Um, all of the all of the necessary information that I needed from that was learned through a mechatronics path. Um, so yeah, we were able to get that project planned out and implemented in a pretty short amount of time within within six months. Yeah. So it sounds to me like you know the the, the mechatronics or the mechatronics engineer really is one of the the problem solvers for mm -hmm. for modern industry as well. So. Uh, lastly, Noah, what I would just like to to ask you is, what advice would you give to someone who's considering a career in engineering? And uh, also, would would you agree that megatronics engineers are in high demand? Yeah, I, I would agree that they are in in high demand uh, since everything is moving towards this automation um, automation side of everything. Uh, definitely having someone that understands about every aspect of what comes with automation, the mechanical, the electrical, the programming with it definitely helps to have a mechatronics engineer on the team. Um, someone considering getting into mechatronics engineering, um, just really, really just uh, pay attention and do a little bit of offline learning on yourself because not everything you're going to learn in the classroom uh, will be able to be brought into your current role sometimes you get to learn little tiny things here and there so if you have a nice a mind for just wanting to learn lots of things uh definitely definitely uh use that to your best ability for sure great that's fantastic no i'd really like to thank you for joining us again on design spark and just giving us a little bit more of an insight into yourself and obviously megatronics there's a lot of young engineers out there who we see on design spark and uh thanks for giving them the insight into uh what it is that you do of course no worries i enjoyed it